Hello, merhaba. My name is Ken Pasternak, and it's a great pleasure to be with you, if only virtually. In this short presentation, I will speak about business lessons from Formula One racing and how they can be relevant to you and your organization. I would love to be in Istanbul, where I lived for several years during the 1980s. I was seconded from Citibank to the Central Bank of Turkey and the Turkish Bankers Association in order to design, build, and run the Center for International Banking Studies in Dragos Kartal. This is what it looked like in 1987 when I took a picture from the pier, my back to the Princess Islands. In one of my many trips back to Istanbul for business in 2004, this is the picture I took. The land had been filled in, a highway had been, been built across, along the coast, and uh, some of my buildings had been taken down. It was just another indication of how things can change, and that change is the only constant. In 1987, there was only one bridge across the Bosporus. There was no metro in Istanbul. There were few, if any, skyscrapers. Progress moves forward and times change, and so organizations have to change with them. Formula One teams need to deal continually with change. They have to deal with change in regulation, technologies, material science, competitor strategies, and even on race day in terms of weather and track conditions. This is not unlike financial institutions who are operating in highly competitive markets. You need to be flexible and agile. And in fact, when the new CEO of UBS took over a year ago, he told the staff, we need to be flexible, agile, and focused. And this is exactly what Formula One teams are. In this short presentation, I'll tell you what Formula One is, for those of you who don't know, why it's relevant to your organization, and some useful takeaways from Formula One racing that could be useful for your leadership team. Formula One is the pinnacle of technology. It is a hotbed of innovation, creativity. It also consumes, analyzes, and manages a huge amount of data. And that data is used in order to make some fast decisions in order to compete effectively in this global, highly competitive industry. A typical example of the technology is the steering wheel on a Formula One car. It has at least 25 buttons relating to brakes and differentials and power unit adjustments and several other items. Each one can cost 50 to 100,000. So you get an idea of what we mean by high technology in terms of motor racing. The other key factors for success in motorsports and Formula One in particular is the power coming from the engine that uh, right now is a V6 hybrid engine, uh, from aerodynamics, the downforce that keeps the car hugging the surface of the track, from the use and choice of tires in order to enable it to get the most out of its car, and of course, reliability, that all this works uh, so that there is no disqualification before the end of the race. To finish first, first you have to finish. There are 10 teams in Formula One. Each car has two teams. The team sizes range from 150 to at least 750 employees. So they're quite large businesses. Sponsorship of the team's totals well over a billion dollars. And this is the engine for some of the creativity and budgets and innovation that takes place in Formula One. As I said, these are very complex cars. They're V6 hybrid engines with energy recovery systems built in. Each car can be about 25,000 parts many of them manufactured in-house by each team, others supplied by partners. Each car has a power unit that could cost upwards of $10 million. And each car that starts the season doesn't necessarily end as the same car. We don't always see these changes, but as many as a thousand changes can take place within a car each week from race to race as the organization, the racing team, discovers new ways to get greater speed. 
There are 22 races this year in 20 countries. And next year, they're looking to do 23 races. But what's interesting, as some races had to drop off, for example, in Japan and Singapore, other races have come in. In addition to the usual Middle Eastern race is in Bahrain and Abu Dhabi, we are going to race for the first time in Saudi Arabia and Qatar. And once again, like last year, Istanbul, Turkey has come back to the Formula One schedule. The race took place just a, couple, a week or two ago. I got involved by doing some work for an international law firm in London. They asked me and two other people to design a workshop to teach their lawyers business acumen. And what we found from running those programs over three years, at least 50 of them for 12, 1300 lawyers, was that this was an interesting storyline to teach business. It had great examples of management and business practices. Formula One had global appeal. It wasn't just for people who love motor racing, the so-called petrol heads. And it wasn't just toys for boys. The women attorneys loved it and enjoyed the program as much as the men did. So what we took away from this was that it was relevant talking about Formula One in these workshops because it covered hyper-competitive industry that was global. Change is the only constant in the industry due to, as I said before, regulation and technology change. Innovation is crucial and it's continual. Knowledge sharing across functional units or so-called silos is paramount in order to succeed. It's performance driven, meaning that everything gets measured. And effective teamwork is required. It's not just the driver sitting in the car. It's all 150, 700 of the employees working together to provide the fastest car each weekend. So in summary, Formula One is about sustaining performance in a dynamic, regulated, competitive environment. It's about achieving high performance at the limit of each team's financial, technical, and human potential. And it's about being agile and adaptable as regulation and the situation and competition changes. To my mind, this is no different than your mission as leaders of financial institutions. As I said, I started by getting involved in this workshop for law firm. And over time, based on that, these two colleagues and I who did the workshops wrote Performance at the Limit, Business Lessons from Formula One, published by Cambridge University Press. It came out in Japanese the next year. And then in 2007, we made an eight part TV series inspired by the book with the BBC called Formula for Success. 2009, we wrote a second edition. A South Asian edition came out two years later when there were actually Formula One races in India for a short time. 2016, we wrote the third and latest edition of the book because so much had changed in the industry and with the teams. And that's been translated into Turkish and into Chinese. Now, out of this third edition, I'd like to share with you the performance pyramid, which we feel tells a great story that's relevant to Formula One and to any organization. Let me start with the uh, triangle or the pyramid itself focus, constant learning, and winning culture. What do we mean by constant learning? Well, when you look at any organization, they typically follow a pattern of planning, doing, and reviewing. Much is put into strategizing and planning. Doing or executing is what it's all about. But many organizations don't review quite, quite as, much, as much as they should, and at quite as quickly as they should. Having worked in banking for over 20 years, I took part in some risk asset reviews, and I was the subject of various reviews when I ran a few departments. But the findings from those reviews and the learnings and the takeaways were never easily or effectively inculcated into the organization. Formula One teams do reviews constantly. Every race weekend, they have three practice sessions, a qualifying session, and of course, the race. After each of those that I just mentioned, they do a debrief to assimilate all of the quantitative data and qualitative data that they amass from those sessions. It's done right after the event. They ensure that the right people are in the room or are attending virtually. 
They have a process and a system to go through the data very carefully and very systematically so they don't waste time. Everyone gets a can chance to talk who is relevant to the discussion at that point in time. And if decisions need to be made, they're made on the spot and they're acted upon immediately. That's how they develop a continual cycle of learning that enables them to improve and improve and improve after each experiment and after each practice. Focus, well, it comes down to, you know, why do we exist? What are we trying to achieve? It's having a clarity of purpose and that all important vision of what we're trying to accomplish over the next period of time. Some teams are aspiring to be on the podium. Others have a clear vision of being in the middle of the pack, but certainly trying to improve on being at the back of the grid. And that vision is shared throughout the organization, just as it would be in any organization, through constant communication from the leadership team to ensure that everyone is working towards the same purpose. One great example of clarity and focus was given to us by Frank Williams when he was running the Williams team, which he had started up himself. And he told us that anytime someone came to him and asked for more than 5,000 pounds for a project, he would ask only one question. If I give you this money, will it make the car go faster? And I often ask leadership teams when I meet with them, what questions are you asking that hones your mission down to a simple, clear, clear question and point of view? And finally, we have winning culture, creating an organization culture that supports the objectives, the vision, the mission is crucial. And it's about leaders acting as role models, leaders at the top of the organization and leaders throughout the organization, not only at the very top. It's about a one team mindset that everyone understands the purpose of what the organization is trying to achieve and they're working towards that. And it's also very important in an organization that's trying to be creative and innovative, building a culture of no blame, one of psychological safety where employees have the, the sense that they can take risks and not be chastised for experimenting, because if they can't take risks, they can't innovate. innovate. Toto Wolf, who heads up the Formula One team at Mercedes, champions for the last seven years, couldn't have said it any better. Transparency, being honest with each other, blaming the problem and not the person, and empowering people are the values that are of utmost importance to us. That's why they're champions. And of course, on top of focus, constant learning and winning, culture is building a leadership team that espouses the values of the organization each and every day and concentrating on teamwork, making it effective because not any one person can deliver product to a client, customer, and not any one person or one, any one department in a Formula One team can build the car that's going to win. All the parts of the organization need to work together. And it was said best by Ross Braun, who now is the, one of the leaders of Formula One management. But when he was at Ferrari, he told us, it's not an engine, it's not a chassis, it's not an aero package, it's a Ferrari. It's the whole that matters. Now, before I finish, I'd like to share one other thought with you because it's extremely important in this point in time. And like all of your businesses, Formula One is looking at the future and they are trying to become and have said they will become net carbon zero by 2030. And this relates not just to the cars racing on the track and the engines that will be used and the fuels, the sustainable fuels that will be developed, but also to all the support services that bring all of their machinery and equipment and computers around the world in this uh, global operation. It extends also to the race venues where the hosts will have to commit to having their events sustainable from 2025 onward. And also to the fans where they're asking, looking for ways to ensure that fans find green ways to reach the race. So I hope this quick review of lessons from, this, from Formula One have been useful for you. Uh, I urge you to uh, 
take a look at the books if you have a chance to do that. They're available at Amazon and other booksellers. I also like to just mention a new book that came out, my book called Exploding Turkeys and Spare Trousers, Adventures in Global Business. The exploding turkeys part of that actually relates to a little adventure we had when I was living in Turkey. Uh, I hope you would have a chance to look at that. It's short stories, very readable, and uh, I hope you find it interesting and useful. I wish you all a great conference and thank you very much for listening.